Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah and I welcome you all to the GSP 1202-2202 use of library model 3. My other colleagues shall be covering model 1 and 2 and I shall be taking you through the model 3 of this course. My name is Hayatuddin Adamu from the Department of Library and Information Sciences, Faculty of Education, Bio University, Kano. I shall be facilitating you through the course, which shall be covering copyright and censorship materials in libraries, database and web resources management, and finally, internet application to library and information centers. The whole idea behind the course is to acquaint students as far as issues of copyright and censorship of library materials are concerned. Secondly, to bring to the awareness of students the availability of database and web resources in addition to the print information resources provided by library. And finally, to introduce to students internet application to library and information centers. In essence, how the coming of ICTs have come to change the way libraries provide information resources and services in the 21st century. By way of introduction, it is very important to state that the roles of libraries in supporting teaching, learning and research activity in every community, society or nation cannot be overemphasized. Libraries right from inception have been playing a very important role in the life of individuals and libraries shall continue to play these important roles in ensuring that we continue to have an informed society. The word library comes from Liba, which is a Latin word for book. So library as an important establishment, a social institution which selects and lies with its users information need, they acquires the selected resources, they organizes them, they preserve this information resources, and most importantly, they disseminate these information resources to the users of the libraries. Unlike bookshops or bookstores, the collections found in library are usually systematically organized to facilitate easy access by the user at every point in time. It is also very important to note at this point that in the event a user walks into a library or a user attempts to access the information resources of any library, be it in electronic form or in print form, the library is expected to ensure that the information need of that user is provided in the easiest form. The library is expected to ensure that no user is frustrated in trying to have access to library's information resources and services. If it's in order to achieve this objective, 
that library's information resources are usually systematically organized in order to facilitate easy access. Libraries and information centers, by virtue of their establishments, are described as gateways to knowledge and culture. They are designed to provide access to knowledge, learning, and ideas. Libraries are the first port of call whenever anybody decides to seek for information. It is also in line with this that academic libraries, that is the libraries that exist within institutions of learning, are described as the heart of the academic institution. We all know the role the heart plays within the human system. Without the heart, the human system will never be able to function. This also goes to show that the place of the library within any institution of learning, be it a university, a polytechnic, a college of education, is so remarkable that without the library, those institutions will never be able to function. Libraries have also been described as the people's university, especially the public library. There are several persons that never went through the four walls of the university, but by virtue of their ability to read and write, they can always access the information resources available in public library in order to satisfy their information need. It is in line with this that different countries of the world are ranked according to the level of the development of their libraries and information centers. In recent time, according to statistics released in 2021, the findings have come to show that Norway and Canada are one among the most developed countries of the world. And this is because of their level of development as found in their libraries and information centers. Therefore, the major objectives of libraries revolve around ensuring the select the appropriate material, they acquire the selected appropriate material, they organize, store, and preserve them in order for users to be able to access them. Having understood what library actually stands for, Libraries play a very important role as far as copyright issues are concerned. A lot of you have been hearing about copyright for a very long time, and some of you might be hearing about copyright for the first time. Different persons hold different perception, that is, understanding of what copyright actually implies. Within the context of our discussion, copyright refer to that legal term used to describe the rights that creators have over their literary and artistic work. This implies that copyright simply refer to the monopoly given to an author over the work created by that particular person. Only the author have the right to do whatever they want to do with their work. Meaning that any other person outside the author who attempts to use the work will be doing that illegally without the consent of the author. Copyright is that legal right to reproduce, to publish, and sell the matter and form of a literary, dramatic, musical, or artistic work. So if today an author writes a book and somebody decides they want to act the content of that book into a theme, or they want to gather people together in a particular stadium or theater such that the content of the book can be acted on stage while other people watch from their seats, the person will only be able to do that 
if the author agrees or consent for him or her to do that. Meaning that in the event such kind of activity happens without the legal consent of the author, the person will have been deemed to have violated what is referred to as copyright. Copyright also is that branch of law known as intellectual property law, which grants the author the exclusive privilege for them to reproduce, distribute, and perform their work. Intellectual property law, as a larger branch in the field of law, is divided into three different parts. The first branch is known as patent, the second branch is known as trademark, and the third branch of the intellectual property law is known as the copyright. Within the context of this discussion, our concern is simply on copyright. The goal of copyright law is to encourage authors to invest effort in creating new work of art. Most importantly, copyright is simply there to stimulate innovation, creativity, and breakthrough among people. Copyright is there to discourage others from copying the work of others. In that way, the only option you have is to sit back, brainstorm, and bring about an innovation or a new area where somebody or nobody have ever written or talked about. Copyright is there to prevent others from removing the back cover of another person's work and replacing it with a new back cover and then claiming the work to be theirs. So in every country of the world, there is a legal law fully documented in the constitution of every country that prohibits people from violating copyright. A violation of copyright could either end the violator, a fine by a court of law, or imprisonment, and in some cases, boots, that is the person will be fined and imprisoned, depending on the level or extent to which they have violated, violated the rights of the author in the use of their work without the author's consent. In our discussion into copyright, and in addition to what we have understood so far about copyright, it is very important at this point for every user of the library to know and also understand that not every literary work is protected by the copyright law. For a work to be protected by the copyright law, it is expected to be fixed and original. For a work to be fixed, the literary work or whatever work of art it is must be recorded in some form of permanent format where reference can be made to in the future. It is expected that the work must either be written down or stored onto an ICT device like a computer floppy disk or a CD or the work is recorded onto a videotape or sculpted on a marble. In this way, you are making the work to be fixed and permanent where reference can be made to. For a work to be original, this also implies that 
the work must not be copied from previously existing material and the work in question must display at least some reasonable level of creativity or innovation. Therefore, if as an author you so wish for the copyright law to protect the content of your work, you must ensure that the work is recorded, fixed onto any recording device and the work should be able to show some good level of originality. In addition to this, there are certain categories of work that the copyright law covers. Copyright law covers literary or works of literature, examples of books, textbooks, novels, as found in our libraries, both in print and non-print format. Copyright laws are also there to protect music, songs that have been sung by people, by musicians, as well as the lyrics. Copyright law also protects drama, has been acted by people. It protects pantomime and dance, pictures, graphics, even softwares which are product from ICT's computers are also protected by copyright. If today you write a software program about an application, copyright law protects the software as well as the program. Having understood the categories of work covered by copyright, it is very important at this point for us to discuss into the reasons for copyright. Like we earlier stated, copyright has been instituted in order to promote creativity and the innovation in literary and works of art. Aside from that, the legal holder of copyrights also enjoys protection based on moral, economic and cultural grounds. This protection are designed and aimed toward First and foremost, guaranteeing the author, who is the holder of a copyright, the monopoly right to control for a specified period. The use is made of his work, including sale to publisher. This implies that, that a work is protected by copyright doesn't mean it will last forever. No. Every copyrighted work is expected to last for a specified period as defined by the laws of that particular country. This also goes to say that copyright laws in terms of application varies from country to country. Example, for literary, musical, or artistic works other than photographs, copyrights in the work will expire 70 years after the end of the year in which the author dies. That is, if a literary or a musical or artistic work is being put together today by an author, The copyrights of that particular work will expire 
70 years from the day the author of that work dies. So not 70 years from the period the work was written, no, but rather 70 years from the day the author dies. The author might write a book and probably lives for the next 50 years with his book, Expiration of the copyright which is protecting that work will ex will come to an end 70 years from the year the author dies. That will be 50 years from the period the author wrote the work down to the period he died and then additional 70 years. That means there will be copyright protection on the work for a period of 120 years. One among the reasons for copyright protection in addition to what have been mentioned above is to guarantee an or to a publisher the monopoly right to print to work within national boundaries. So aside from the fact that an author enjoys copyright, the publisher of that work also enjoys copyright. Only the publisher is expected and allowed to publish that work within national boundaries for a specified period. Copyright is also geared toward providing financial compensation for authors as a reward for their creativity. And most importantly, it is geared toward fostering development in the area of arts and science. Having said so much about copyrights, the laws protecting copyright holders, how long these laws are expected to protect them, and what will happen to a violator of a copyright. It is also expected for students to know that there are exceptions in copyright. Exception here implies that in every rule, there are areas in which the rules, the laws will be overlooked. For educational purpose, when a copyrighted book is being used within the conduct or context of education for teaching and learning. The student or the teachers doesn't need the consent of the author of the book for them to be able to use the book for educational purpose. Likewise, libraries are allowed to make extra copies of rare books. Rare books are books that still remain very important yet yeah, it's very difficult to find in the market. Some could be very old book, they may look outdated, but the content remains relevant irrespective of ages and time. Such books are usually in high demand by users of library, and as a result, libraries are allowed to make extra photocopies of those books in order for users to be able to have access to them. For support or development of humanity, for instance, in the case of IDPs in Borno, IDPs in any other part of Nigeria, person or group of persons can decide to pick up any existing novel, schedule a place, a time, and ask people to pay a token that the contents of the novel probably can be acted on the stage. People can come and watch and proceed from such events will be channeled toward assisting IDPs or the less privileged in society. In such cases, the organizers of such events will not be requesting or demanding or needing any form of consent from the author of such book that will be used for such event. And finally, owners of computer softwares are also allowed to make extra copies as a measure against loss of data or damage to their computer. It is very important at this point for every student to understand some certain issues. First, plagiarism and copyright. There is a strong demarcating line between plagiarism and copyright. Students must understand that plagiarism here involves 
copying someone else's work and taking credit for it as your own original work. Copyright, on the other hand, entails using someone else's work and not paying for them. That is a big copyright infringement. Secondly, making photocopy within the principle of fair usage. Principle of fair usage here implies that students are not expected to make photocopies of a whole book beyond seven or in some cases 14 and 15 pages. Anything above that is a violation of the copyright law and that means you have gone above the principle of fair usage. If you must make photocopy of the entire book, simply go and buy the book for yourself. Own an original copy rather than making photocopy of an entire book. Photocopy of an entire book amounts to infringement and violation of copyright laws. Copyright protection is not limited to only information resources such as books. Students must also know that copyright also protects music, records, drama, dance, such as we have listed in the previous chapters. It's also important for students to understand that copyright protects both a published and an unpublished work. A published work are examples of test books. Unpublished works are examples of the thesis, the dissertation, the project that are found in libraries. In addition, as soon as you put pen to paper, brush the canvas, fingers to keyboard, and create something original, it is copyrighted. And just like we've mentioned in the previous chapter, it is expected for students to also know how long a copyrighted work lasts in protecting a given work. And finally, students must understand that copyright can be inherited. You don't simply assume that since the author of this work is dead, the copyright of the work also dies or expires. Copyright can be inherited, it can be passed from father to son, passed from husband to wife, and so on and so forth. So the moment the rights vested on a particular work has been inherited by a new person, students are also to ensure that they accord to that particular information resources, the expected rights. Below are the several areas in which librarians are expected to assist students in ensuring that students do not violate copyright. Photocopying and scanning articles, librarians are expected to provide all the necessary support by creating awareness to students. Ensuring that photocopying and scanning are done within the principle of fair usage. Copying software offering it for multiple users. Softwares are meant to be sold by the owners of the software and the users are meant to buy the software. The fact that they are software, you as a user are not expected to begin to share the software with all your friends and colleagues, either through any other sharing application like Xander, the Bluetooth, and so on and so forth. By doing that, you are violating the principles of copyright. Downloading or incorporating music into presentation and cost management systems. While conducting presentation using PowerPoint, you download music and attach to them. You don't have the right to do that until you have gotten the right consent from the author of such music. Negotiating permissions with others for the use of their content, interpreting digital content licenses with third parties, all these and several other issues. Librarians are expected to ensure it is brought to the awareness of their users and the students within the universities. Another very important 
topic to be discussed is the issue of censorship. Censorship over time have created a lot of debate among several scholars within the field of librarianship and even beyond. Censorship have been used by different governments, different organizations, different agencies, different group bodies and even individuals to achieve different objective over time. The term censorship is derived from the Latin word censor, which means to access. It implies that censorship simply have to do with tempering with the right to access a given information. By definition, censorship has been described as a suppression of speech or the deletion of communicative material which may be considered objectionable, harmful, or sensitive as determined by a censor. It is also seen as a prohibition of production, distribution, circulation, or sale of materials considered to be objectionable for reasons such as those of politics, religion, obscenity, blasphemy, etc. Going by this definition, it goes to show that censorship in its most simplest form refers to the act of removing for public consumption any material or information that is considered to be harmful to either the person or the society at large. Censorship may be applied to both written and oral communication, especially as it relates to any communication that have been deemed or defined to be harmful toward another entity. Censorship in libraries have been an issue of concerted debate among librarians, the library management, and the users of the library, and most importantly, the community where the library exists. A library being a public facility where people can consult whatever form of information they want without fear or exception, it also brings to mind the question, why should some particular information resources be restricted from members of the public? If ordinarily, the library is a facility for accessing whatever information as the claim goes. As a result, several individual groups, agencies, organizations have come out to lend their voice against any form of censorship and for whatever reasons they stood for. 
censorship have always been there. Well built and fully instituted across different cultures and society. For instance, be you a Muslim or a Christian, there are different forms of censorship that exist across this individual religion. For instance, every religion abhors pornography. Be you a Christian or a Muslim, both religion condemns an individual making attempts to access or watch obscene images as found on the internet or through any other means. In like terms, libraries across the society where they exist are also faced with a situation as regards which type of information resources they are allowed to share freely with the members of the public and which they are expected to keep away from members of the public. As a result, libraries and librarians are in a dilemma in trying to achieve the objective which revolves around the provision of information resources to users whose reading interests span across all areas of human endeavor. Should the user walk into the library and demand that he should be given access to pornographic materials? Should the user walk into the library and demand that he should be given access to information resources in which the content wholly disregards all the risk to the contributions of any government in power, it is duty bound on that particular library to ensure that those information resources are made available to the users. But by virtue of censorship, which we shall be discussing the types in an upcoming slide, librarians are restricted by the rules of censorship not to provide access to certain information resources. These resources in some cases are described as banned. The contents are usually controlled or boldly having the stamp censored. Different forms of censorship exist across different societies. As of 2018, five types of censorship were identified to be used in restricting access to different information resources across different libraries. First and foremost relates to vandalizing the pages of the book. This is a form of censorship so that people will not have access to them. Those pages that relates or that talks about a particular activity will be deliberately removed in order to reduce wider circulation of such pages. Number two is also hiding resources. Libraries and librarians at times go to the extent of hiding some resources from members of the public because those resources are tagged as censored. In other instances, parental permission are required for people to be able to access some 
particular kind of information resources, be it in printed formats or as found in electronic formats online. In some cases, videos are tagged as adults. In other instances, some other videos are given different names in order to limit several kinds of persons from accessing the content of such videos. In addition, people also go to the extent of removing different materials from record or from library in order to limit their access. And in worst case scenarios, books are being burned so that people will never have access to the content of such information resources. Apart from the forms of censorship, we also have different types of censorship that exist across different society. First and foremost is what is referred to as political censorship. This is the form of censorship which occurs when governments hold back information from their citizens, mainly for political reasons. We also have moral or ethical censorship, which entails the removal of material that is censored regards to be obscene or otherwise questionable. Example, pornography, which is often censored under this kind of rationale. We also have religious censorship, a situation where in the name of religion, some information resources considered to be objectionable to certain faiths or sect have been removed from circulation. We also have military censorship, which is the process of keeping military intelligences and tactics confidential and keeping away from the enemy. As far as libraries are concerned, Library is concerned with information in whatever form. Any act to keep away such kind of information for whatever reason is tagged as censorship. And finally, we have the most recent 21st century types of censorship, which is known as the internet censorship, where certain websites, videos, images are given limited access because of what they contain. In addition to all we have discussed today, the next and very most important topic is the topic on database and web resources. Database and web resources are two very important sources of information students are expected to explore in the pursuit of their academic career. A database and web resources like their print counterpart found on the shelves of library contains very important and authoritative information that will support a student or researcher in their academic activity. As a student, several questions readily comes to mind. Questions such as, where do you go to find the information for your projects or reports? Where do you go to find authoritative, credible, and current information? Where do you go to find information that you can trust and which does not have to be tediously evaluated for authority, credibility, and currency? And to better put, where can you find information easily, quickly, information that gives you citation in some cases already formatted in the style you want. 
the answer to these questions and several more is what we refer to as database. A database refer to collection of electronic records or information resources that could be processed to produce useful information. The data that we find in a database can be accessed, modified, managed, controlled, and organized to perform various data processing operations. Database, also called electronic database, is an indexed collection of magazine, journal, newspaper articles, abstract, and other information which have been checked for accuracy and reliability by their publishers and have been licensed for distribution in online or electronic format. A library database, therefore, is a searchable electronic index of published reliable resources. The key word to a database is the aspect of reliability. Virtually all information resources found in a database have been found to be reliable and related to the area of knowledge of individual researcher. Our web resources, on the other hand, are those resources you find online through the internet. Access to web resources are usually guaranteed by using search engines such as Google or Yahoo Search. It is important to note that while several students prefer to use Google or Yahoo Search, it is very much advisable that database and its content should be explored by students in order to satisfy their information need. There are several importance attached to using the library database. For instance, when you need authoritative scholarly information for class assignment or research, always turn to database, especially those found in your local library. This is because databases provide access to wealth of useful research materials from academic journals, newspapers, and magazines. It also allows large number of users to access single information at the same time and in many different formats. Several libraries across different institutions and universities especially spend huge amount of money in order to maintain continuous access to different databases and in different fields of studies. While we have databases in some single areas of studies, we have other databases that contains information that span across several areas of field of study. So a database, therefore, have been checked to ensure accuracy and reliability by publishers and their articles are indexed and included in a full text online format in various databases. What is the difference between a database and a web resources? A very common question asked by several students. In terms of the creation of the various information resources that makes up a database, the major providers and the publishers are usually experts, professionals, 
and people who are authoritarian in that particular field, they are usually the major contributors of information, resources, and even articles that are found on database. Meaning that if a database is to be managed and for it to be successful, the managers of those databases will never allow any Dick and Harry to write anything and send into their database. Databases are known to be a very reliable and credible source of information. So every article, journal, or information that are found in a database are in types of information resources that have been found to meet certain requirements. Most importantly, reliability, credibility, and originality. However, for the web resources, anybody can create a web article and send it to the internet. It lacks credibility, reliability in several instances. In terms of access, everybody can access a web resources. It has no restriction. You don't need a username or a password. In searching a web resources, they are free and can be searched using a search engine, examples such as Google, Yahoo, Bing, and several other available search engine. Retrieval, one search gets results from many different internet sites. If you type any particular search term through the Google search bar, different results are retrieved from different computers across different parts of the world. It is left for you, the researcher, to filter and decide which is best for you and your research. The content must be independently verified by the individual researcher for them to be able to use it. It is left for you as a researcher to decide within your own discretion, is this article reliable? Is it verified? Are the findings related in the research true? Such questions usually arise, mostly as it relates to the kind of documents or resources you find on the web or internet resources. The database, however, access are simply restricted to subscribers only. If you don't subscribe to the database by virtue of fee or registration with them, you can't have access to their database. Searching proprietary search engine. Only several few search engines are allowed or have access to searching and making available hits from a database. Retrieval. One search gets better results from a single database or from a predetermined group database as against one search that gets many several different results from a web resource. And finally, the content as against the case of a web resource, which must be independently verified, publications of recognized reliability, including peer-reviewed journals, are usually done on a database. There are several types of database available for students to access. While we have a bibliographic database, those are the type of database that provide descriptive record of an item, but the item itself is not provided in the database. Most situation, bibliographic database provide the user or the researcher with what is referred to as bibliographic details of a book. The full text are not usually available. Bibliographic details are simply details that have been used to describe the content of that information resources. Example, the name of the author, the year of publication, a brief abstract. In some other cases, the table of content are provided and references are also made available. But the full body of the work are usually excluded in bibliographic database. Secondly, we have the full text database, which provide the full text of a publication as against the bibliographic database. While these two types of database exist, several other types of database also exist. Examples are the numeric database, 
that provides researcher with statistics or demographic information. A very good example of such database in Nigeria are the type hosted by the National Bureau of Statistics. When a researcher in Nigeria is in need of any statistical information, they simply refer to the database hosted by the National Bureau of Statistics because they are the ones that provide most verifiable statistics within the Nigerian system. You can also find database that provides you the images, audio, and a combination of both. And the last type of database is what is known as the meta database. These are databases that allow one to search for content that is indexed in other databases. The final topic of discussion is the application of ICTs to libraries and information centers. Traditionally, libraries have been known to exist and operate using traditional or conventional means. However, with the coming of ICTs, Information and Communication Technology, libraries are now beginning to offer their services through the paraphernalia offered by ICT. With the coming of ICTs, lots of transformation have been witnessed across different libraries. Different transformation have been witnessed across different libraries in different parts of the world. ICT, as the name implies, simply refers to information and communication technologies. This is often used as an extended synonym for information technology, IT. Aside from information resources, Libraries also provide information services through the use of IC. Several benefits have been accrued as a result of the coming of ICTs into library. This have led to a great shift in paradigm from print resources to digital or electronic resources. All these have been made possible as a result of the internet. One of the important benefits of ICTs to library is it provides easy and speedy access to information. Unlike in the past, when access to information resources are found to be a bit difficult because the user will have to approach the library, demand or request for a book, use the book within the time or period provided by the library, the common of ICTs have come to change the trend. as it also applies to searching of information resources through a library database. Rather than going through the library catalog, which used to be very tedious, the user can equally use the online public access catalog in order to get quick and speedy access to information resources. In terms of remote access, users can at any time of their choice access the content of every library as against a system whereby you can only access the content of the library from 8 a.m. when the library opens and the moment the library closes for the day your access to the library is terminated until another time but with ICTs through the internet you can access the content of the library from anywhere in the comfort of your room and at any time High cities provide access to unlimited information from different sources. The comparison still goes back to the system whereby a user comes to access the content of one book. And until the user is done with that one book, 
then decide to open another book and on and on and on. But with ICTs, you can access several information resources within the same time. One particular information resources can also provide a direct link to another information resources by virtue of the internet. It provides increased flexibility, facilitates reformatting and combination of data from different sources, especially for researchers. Facilitate easy dissemination of information in line with users' information need. It provides alternative choices for researchers in terms of information. Aside from the benefits of ICTs and even the different types of information resources which have been provided by virtue of ICTs such as electronic book, electronic magazine, electronic journals, database. There are several ICT-based services users can also benefit. These ICT-based services are provided by library in order to satisfy the information needs of users. Very importantly is the library web portal. This is a specially designed and developed web portal for the library, which is available on the internet. It enables the user to access many useful information frequently. The library web portal are usually linked to the online public access catalog where users can access available electronic documents. This portal also used to communicate, or is also used to communicate campus news, important events, and other related information to the users. Another important library services or ICT-based services provided by library is the resource sharing. Conventionally referred to as resource sharing, but with the coming of ICTs, they are now referred to as consortia. Libraries are using this technology for resource sharing to share information resources among themselves. Libraries having computerized their working and services can be linked with each other through a suitable communication technology. These items enable the participating libraries to obtain material from each other's collection in the form of list of books, indices, and abstract. The resource sharing as it is with the comment of ICT have come to replace the old system where libraries share their resources through what is referred to as interlibrary loan. Another important library-based services is the database services. In addition, we also have the literature search services where a user can approach a library and request for them to assist in searching for related literatures within their own areas of interest. There is the bibliographic search services where a user can remotely access or contact a library for them to provide a researcher with the bibliographic details of certain information resources. Another very important and renowned ICT-based service is the online reference service. These have come to replace the old conventional reference service performed in the reference section using the reference information resources of the library. With online reference services, a user can sit in their home, in their offices, at their own comfort to ask different reference questions and the answers will be provided there and then. With ICT-based services provided by library, access to web resources, video library services, and several other services are also provided. In conclusion, having discussed about copyrights, where I have been able to bring to the students' awareness all there is to copyright issues, 
the violations and the penalties that may come the moment a student violates copyright issues. The issue of censorship have also been greatly hammered upon and the effort libraries have been making over time to ensure that it creates awareness and sensitize students on issues that relate to censorship. In addition, the issue of database and web resources have been discussed where the student is expected to know the difference between a database and a web resources. And students are encouraged to ensure they patronize library database as against any other kind of web resources. And finally, applications of ICTs to libraries and information centers have also been discussed in order to bring to the awareness of students that access to library data, access to library information resources and services doesn't necessarily require the student to come on to be in the library in person. You can access the content of libraries under a normal circumstance from the comfort of your room, your hostel, your offices, and any other place of convenience. Therefore, to better achieve your aims and objectives as a student, the extensive use of libraries' resources as additional learning material outside class notes is a key factor. And finally, a student yearning for academic excellence is expected to ensure regular visit to and use of the resources and services of the library, which must be made a part of their daily routine. While I implore you to make the library your best friend, I wish you the very best in your academic pursuit in Bayer University, Kano. Thank you. Until we meet again, remember to tell yourself that change begins with me. Change begins with you. Let's change ourselves, change our society, and make Nigeria a better place. Thank you and goodbye.